Hello, I'm Matthew Burrell and I'm the County Commissioner of Norfolk Scouts and thank you for watching this presentation where I want to talk a little bit about the team and culture that we're trying to build for our adult learning and development in the county. And I'm going to focus in on some new roles that we're now advertising uh, that hopefully um, some of you people will will take an interest in those roles and maybe nominate someone that uh, you think would be really good at them or or put in a self nomination uh, if if you fancy a new challenge. So in Norfolk, we're aiming to have 7,250 young people by 2023 and be delivering them with an inspirational skills for life um, programme. <clears throat> to do that, we've identified six key areas that we need to develop on and four of those have a direct link to our learning and development um, functions. We want uh, new adult volunteers to have a great time when they join Norfolk Scouts. We want to make sure that our existing and new section leaders have the practical scouting skills necessary to deliver an adventurous, fun and rewarding programme. And we want to transform the way that we recruit adults. Underpinning all of that is that we want to provide a high quality adult training provision. So what does that mean? So if you're a new adult volunteer, that's all about an easy, accessible induction. We have online getting started training at the moment, but we also need to complement that with face to face. I think it's really important that for new volunteers, people perhaps that we don't know, we should have some face to face contact and induction with them to understand what they already know. Uh, but also how they like to learn so that we can focus the, the training, learning and development for the best suits their needs. As part of that induction, really quickly, those people need to learn the things they need to know to do their role and also our key policies and where they can go if they feel like they need some help. We need to focus on developing our existing and new section leaders with, with more practical skills. We we know from the feedback for our county plan that leaders really valued the training scheme that we had, but said that it didn't actually provide them with all of the skills that they needed to deliver the program. So that could be some more practical weekends or focusing on areas where leaders feel they need some development and curating and uh, delivering some materials for that. Wouldn't it be fantastic if our training scheme and our learning and development was on such a pinnacle that actually it was a reason why people volunteered with scouting? And actually that's that's okay. Um, the learning and development that we provide for adults is one of the only ways really that we can return some of the investment that the adults commit on scouting with their time um, and, and if they get some skills for their CV or some qualifications out of it then then that is absolutely brilliant and, and, and really good. But also the people who come on our training they, they need to advocate the training that they've received and we know that people who come on our training now say that it's really good and that they, they really feel they benefited from it but we're still not touching the complete audience that we need to be with our training. So what are the challenges with our learning and development in scouting at the moment? Well, we have the scheme itself. The scheme is the best part of 20 years old. And luckily it's a modular scheme. So we've been able to review little bits as we've gone along. Um, and we've bolted bits on uh, and we've created new new areas and we've created new new learning but actually the whole scheme in itself is now starting to show its age and we know that scouting is changing dramatically over the next few years and it's right that as part of the volunteer journey our uh, learning and development scheme will, will be recreated 
to, to accompany that. And we need to be ready for that change, but it also means that we need to be realistic that the scheme we've got today is the one that we need to use. But let's let's be innovative and let's use some common sense in, in making sure that that's still contributing everything it needs to for our people. Reporting and management information for training. This is an area of attention. Actually, we can get an enormous amount of reporting and data about our training. It does not come in the best format. Um, and this is where we need to, to concentrate some energy on making sure that we're producing uh, consistent quality reporting, which is helping drive the, the scheme. Our volunteers time is a challenge. They say to us that, that they can commit X number of hours uh, to, to develop uh, young people and we need to be appreciative of that. And this training which we provide, which is crucially important sometimes for their roles, uh, is usually on top of that. So we need to make sure that what we deliver is good quality and is valued by those volunteers so that when they when they commit that extra time, they come away and think that that was a real worthwhile goal. Our demand, we need to understand that better. Um, we need to make sure that we're providing the modules that people need in the places where, where it's needed. Uh, and we need to apply some levels of, of tactical thinking. We have got some, some challenges and some legacy issues with some areas of training that, that seem to, there seems to be a gap and there seems to be a lot of people that need. Um, but actually, some of that gap can be, be, be bridged by validation or, or focusing some concerted efforts. We need to ensure consistency. We, we've got well over two and a half thousand people in our county in a number of locations, all supported by, by volunteer training advisors and local training managers. And we need to make sure that someone in the far east of the county uh, has to present the same level of validation and has to demonstrate the same level of competence as, as someone over in the west. And we've also got the managers and supporters uh, training which has, has been introduced. Um, that's quite different to any training scheme that we've had uh, and we've now got in effect two schemes running alongside each other, one for our section leaders and, and one for our managers and supporters. Uh, there's been some teething issues with, with the manager and supporters training um, and I think primarily it just needs needs a bit of resource and it needs some understanding. Most importantly with our managers and supporters communities who there's anecdotal evidence that they, they don't really understand what they need to do to demonstrate the competencies uh, as a manager or supporter and, that, and that's quite sad and that's something that we need to, to focus on. We can achieve these with, I think, a bit of fresh thinking, definitely some resource uh, and a teamwork culture. So let's have a little bit of background as to why we perhaps need to think about things a little bit differently now. So traditionally, a county has only had one uh, training manager. In some large counties, uh, there may have been multiple divided up geographically, but that one person was responsible for the direction, development, delivery and administration of the whole scheme. They were also line manager to the local training managers. They're people who provide direction in areas of the county, so in Norfolk, in, in our districts. Uh, to the trainers, the people who provide the training provision, and also uh, any administrators we have for the scheme. And there's been some growing responsibilities. So we started off with a modular training scheme. Then a number of mandatory ongoing learnings were introduced, um, quite important for safety, safeguarding, uh, and first aid. We then created an executive training scheme for our trustees, which is discreetly different to, to the rest of the modular scheme. 
couple on the managers and supporters training that was added last year. And finally, with the practical skills, additional learning and, and other county plan initiatives that we want to add on. The burden upon the county training manager is now to the point where it is more than one person's work. My plan is to introduce four county training managers, each with a discrete area of work. We have a county training manager for what I call are the basics. So that's the getting started training, the, the ongoing learning, first aid, safety, safeguarding, keep, keeping the tabs on all of that, making sure that the provision is there. A county training manager for section leaders, focusing in on the section leader wood badge, um, the practical skills training, and also supporting people through the change of role process. Another county training manager for managers, supporters and trustees. Um, and this will focus on, on the management support of Wood Badge, uh, but also the trustee executive training, which both of those schemes, managers and supporters and trustees, have their own special trainer who has to be qualified to deliver those. Uh, and also looking at appointments um, and some of the administration uh, training. And finally, a county training manager for uh, quality assurance and reporting. And, and it will be the, the role of that training manager to produce, analyse and interrogate a lot of that reporting and that data that, that I mentioned earlier. And use those, those sources of data to provide some clear directional reporting to the other training managers as well as the local training managers who, who they will manage um, to make sure that we don't miss anyone out, make sure people don't don't drop off the radar, to put on the modules where we, we've got demand and to put them actually geographically where we seem to have uh, gaps in that learning. Uh, and, and really importantly, to, to give the, the local training managers some kind of stab in the dark of the people who they should be focusing on to, to help them to achieve the, their wood badge or to complete the training for their role. So in a little bit more detail, um, the county training manager for the basics. Now, that's my term, uh, the basics, because I think these are the things that are important that everyone should have before they then go on to, to do something else. So it's looking at the, the getting started training and, and providing that in a, in, a, in face, face to face and also signposting the, the online learning. Working with the safeguarding coordinators to, to provide regular refresher training there and also reviewing and developing the, the, the training materials. Um, module one, module three, module four, which are the, the getting started um, modules, they're, they're reviewed every every few years. But we know that in the meantime, there's all sorts of little things that get introduced. GDPR is a, is a classic example. Uh, and making sure that the, the local training that we, we deliver adds that extra value. We know that first aid is organised and delivered in no end of locations across the county, but we've got no coordinated approach to advertise that and to fill gaps on those courses. Uh, that is probably one of the most common questions that, that's asked is, you know, when is the next um, first aid training? And having someone who's got a finger on the pulse to be able to direct people would be incredibly useful. Um, uh, and it'd be someone who's a, a subject matter expert on the getting started and an ongoing learning. The county training manager for section leaders, the, the, their responsibility be for organising and promoting the face to face training uh, at locations across the county and also promoting virtual training. And these are the modules um, that we traditionally know is up to, to module 19. Um, they will be managing a set of trainers who deliver those modules and they'll be coordinating the trainers, the right trainers to deliver the, the right courses. They will ensure that every module is provided through multiple channels. Uh, and also there will be uh, an ongoing development of those 
those training and, and adding our, our local touches to to the, to the key syllabus uh, and where possible to make sure that they include as many practical hands-on examples as possible. We'll also introduce additional learning um, so like skills courses uh, and we'll take we'll take feedback from section leaders as to are there any areas of the program or of the scouting skills that they feel quite uncomfortable with and would, would feel they benefit from some training. The county training manager for managers, supporters and trustees, again, they would look to be promoting uh, the face to face training at convenient locations across the region as the um, managing supporters training is actually coordinated at regional levels. So they, they'll be working with their colleagues in other counties to, to deliver and to develop the, the managers and supporters schemes. Um, they'll also help um, develop the understanding of these schemes with managers like myself uh, and the district commissioners, but also really importantly with the learners. They will support the promotion of trustee and administrator training. Trustees provide an enormously important role to our organisation uh, as, as our charity trustees. And it's critically important that we provide them with the training to undertake those roles uh, and to, to understand their responsibilities. The uh, county training manager will also manage the um, specialist trainers for managers and supporters and trustees. The County Training Manager for Quality Assurance and Reporting, they, they will be responsible for running a lot of the, the reports in the background and monitoring our progress on our, on our training journey. They will highlight where we have gaps and, and also perhaps support uh, cleansing some of our data quality issues. They will be managing the local training managers um, and providing them with regular reports to highlight the people in their patches that, that need support or, or maybe need a little extra help. These reports are available for group scout leaders and for district commissioners. Uh, but I think this is where we can really provide um, some support to, to those managers in those key in those key roles. They will also design and create a dip test um, for a regular sample of, of our validations to ensure consistency. Because I know that I've seen some people who've had to produce chapter and verse to, to demonstrate competency in a, in a module, where others have been able to just show a few photographs or um, a few notes. Now, I'm not saying that either of those are incorrect, but I can't hands on heart say that I'm comfortable when there seems to be such a great, great disparity. Uh, and that will be the role of the County Training Manager for Quality Assurance to, to provide that comfort and also to pro provide feedback um, on the best ways to, to validate modules, to make sure that everyone stands uh, a fighting chance. Now here's a bit of a structure chart just to show you where everything sits. So the people who provide direction, they're, they're the, the commissioners. So there's myself uh, in the middle uh, reporting in to the, the board of trustees. The board ultimately has responsibility that we have a set of fit and able volunteers to deliver scouting. Um, I'm delegating the responsibilities for training to a deputy county commissioner for people. Um, and that's currently a vacancy at the moment that, that we're also advertising. Uh, the district commissioners also provide a key role in direction, particularly with their local training managers um, in making sure that the, the people in their patch have got the access to the necessary skills to do their role. Then we have the people who share the load. So these are the roles I've been talking around the uh, county training managers uh, and also uh, our county training administrator. To support that delivery, um, we have uh, a host of people. We have our, our safeguarding awareness coordinators, um, Peter and Trudy, 
our safety coordinator, Charles, uh, and, and our ACC inclusion, who's currently a vacancy. And, and they can all help deliver learning in their specialist areas. We have a, a set of county trainer managers, uh, and we probably just need to formalise that role slightly just so that we're clear on, on who, who exactly our county trainers are. Um, they will be managed by the most appropriate um, county training manager. So um, perhaps if the role is mainly in delivering modules one, three, four, or getting started modules, they might report into the county training manager for the basics. If, if they deliver a whole range of modules that are more focused towards the section leaders, then that county training manager uh, may be more appropriate to be their manager. Um, the, the county training manager for manager support and executives, as, as I said in the, in the last slide, will, will manage the, the specialist um, trainers who, who have to be qualified to deliver that manager support and executive training. And finally, the people who will underpin the success, we've got our local training managers who will report into the uh, county training manager for quality assurance and reporting. Uh, and they've got a dotted line into the district commissioner and um, because that's probably the commissioner that they'll be working really closely with in their patch to make sure that um, all of those people have access to, to good training and find out about all the opportunities that are available to them. And the local training manager will be signposting people onto maybe onto face to face courses or maybe to to uh, online training. And they're supported by district and county training advisors. Uh, and, and they're the people who actually validate the, the modules uh, and support uh, individual learners with their, with their training plans. So the next steps. Well, the next steps is to advertise the deputy county commissioner's role and also the county training manager's roles, um, which which we've done because you you've seen this video and, it, and it's linked it's linked to the the advertisements. But we'll also um, we need to follow the county appointments process, uh, and so we're looking to do that in October, following an end of September deadline on the vacancies. Uh, and I'd like to think that we could have some initial team um, in role for October, November, which kind of aligns with a regional training reboot that's, that's being planned for November time. Well, I hope that's given you a bit of introduction into the roles and what we're trying to deliver in our development and learning space. Um, this is a really interesting part of our work and actually really rewarding. Uh, it gives us an opportunity to return some of the investment for our, our hard working volunteers um, time and graft. If you're interested in, in the roles or, or think they might interest someone you know. We'd be really grateful for a nomination or self-nomination. We've put some role descriptions together. They're quite comprehensive role descriptions, I will warn you. Um, but we've had some feedback that actually we're a bit vague in, in the role descriptions we've been creating in the past. So, so we've really gone to town to give you a really uh, low level of detail as to what the, the roles would involve. You don't necessarily need to have uh, any experience in scouting to deliver these roles. The provision and delivery of training is a, is a fairly transferable skill. And it may be that, that you've been involved in training professionally or in another volunteer organisation, uh, and you think that you've got the skills that, and can really contribute to our team. If you have any questions whatsoever, just don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Uh, and my uh, email and uh, telephone number are on the screen. Thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation. Uh, and I really look forward to receiving some nominations. Cheers.